We are the protests and suffragettes Strong Women in the Clyde Side team, a group of artists, activists, and local historians who have been working to recover and to really revoice um, and share the stories of women activists in Govan from 1900 to the present day. I'm T.S. Bell, Tara Bell. I'm the lead artist and I started the project in 2013. And the other team members that we have with us today are Claire Thompson. Hopefully she's gonna wave, yeah. Uh, Ian McCracken, Leslie Mitchell, Trish Caird. We also have Helen Crawford with us, you may notice, but she's not in a waving mood. Um, and we have Mary Barber with us. And we also have other team members who are with us in spirit. Um, and a big shout out to them. Um, you know who you are and we love you. Uh, so I'm gonna share just a tiny bit on the sort of things that we usually do, um, and then we're gonna move straight into the virtual walk um, of Govan. Um, we're gonna take a virtual tour of some places in, uh, that are key and, and really important within the rent strikes, the 1915 rent strikes. There are also places that are quite close to our hearts. Um, now normally we host what we call art walks, which are a kind of a cross between a guided walk and a sort of a performative intervention or creative interventions. Um, we've been developing this way of working for seven years. And during our walks, we use techniques from the protest movements that we've been studying. So for example, we do a lot of chalking, which we kind of lifted from the suffragettes. We do a lot of temporary graffiti. You'll see some potentially some chalking, some temporary renaming of streets um, that we do with temporary chalk paint as we go on our walks. We also use other performative techniques, um, call and response techniques developed by the Occupy movement in 2012. Um, we've developed some new should we call them interventions team? Some new ways um, to work within this format. And we're genuinely really interested to hear what you think about them, you, our viewers, um, and our, um, those who are participating in this walk with us. Um, in addition to the walks um, in a normal time. We also do quite a lot of archival, archival research. We conduct oral histories um, and we give talks and host Wikipedia workshops. As I said, we've spent literally seven years um, working to find um, and to recover um, and to really revoice um, the the words of specific individuals and sp people who worked within specific protest movements in Govan, Glasgow, Scotland. Um, and really our idea normally um, is that we are speaking back those words into the spaces where these people lived and worked. Obviously we're doing that in a virtual way today. Um, but a lot of these women that you will hear about, that we will share their words with you, um, are either entirely forgotten or I think it's fair to say quite wildly underrepresented within the existing historical narrative. So our first video interlude shares the words of someone we really um, hold in high regard, Elsbeth King. Elsbeth King is the former curator of the People's Palace here in Glasgow in Scotland um, and she is someone who has contributed mightily to the the available knowledge on Scottish suffragettes and women's history, social history broadly um, in Glasgow specifically but throughout Scotland. What we did was we took a quote from her and we asked a large number of people that we have had the privilege of working with in the past, people that we hold in high esteem. They are community activists in Govan. They are our current and team members, some of whom couldn't be with us today. They are partners who we've worked with before. Um, and they are all important, we think, in the sort of ongoing fight to increase community resilience um, in, well, everywhere because we're digital now aren't we so with uh, with 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 that as a praise we'll just go straight to hear El the words of elsbeth king speaking about why learning and recovering women's histories is important in the 1970s we had the re-emergence of the women's movement and the sad thing is that the same debates were being debated all over again almost in the same terminology as the early 1900s. When they were being debated by people who had no idea of the debates in the past. 
The women of the 1970s hadn't a clue about what had happened in their grandmother's generation. And this has always been the case. And this has always been the case. Achievements have been lost from generation to generation. And you wonder how much longer this can go on. Because history has repeated itself about six times over since 1800. The women involved in the Chartist movement in Scotland left little that was tangible for those in anti-slavery movement to take up. And the activities of women of the anti-slavery movement, which ultimately led to those who fought for the vote and political representation. Well, their activities have been entirely forgotten by about 1870. It is very sad. It's very sad. I think we should be digging deeper and deeper into women's history. To try to establish what past achievements were. In order to know where women are going in the future. We are starting our virtual walk at the Mary Barber statue in Govan Cross, which was revealed um, and sort of opened in March 2018. I got a message from Maria Fife, um, who is the chair of the Remembering Mary Barber Committee, which is the committee that raised the money and actually made this statue happen. Um, and she wanted to just share the following statement, which I'm just going to read out so it's my voice, but pretend you're hearing Maria Fife. Um, Congratulations on today's celebration of Mary Barber and the strong women of the Clydeside. Mary's statue not only celebrates her historic achievements, but it gives pride um, to local children and those further afield um, in their forebears. And it is inspiring many a fight for justice where pe people gather for campaigns. Only recently, women in Glasgow fought for equal pay and won. And 50 years since the Equal Pay Act, carers and nurses should expect a grateful nation to demand they are properly paid. Avanti. So that's from Maria Fife. Thank you, Maria. We're gonna be sharing with you direct quotes today from governites who were involved in organizing the rent strikes. Um, and that includes Mary Barber, but it also includes people like Agnes Dolan, Mary Burns Laird, um, Helen Crawford, um, and many others. We have spent quite a lot of time trying to unpack what's often referred to as Mrs. Barber's army, um, because our research suggests that while Mary Barber was the leading woman in Govan, as described by her colleague, Helen Crawford, rather than being followed by a sort of a, a nameless army of people, um, she was part of a very developed network or meshwork of women, of strong women of the Clyde side. So I wanna briefly set the stage and then I'm gonna hand over to Leslie, who's gonna share more about Mary Barber's direct voice and also um, describe some rent strike, ac uh, describe a, a rent strike action. We need to remember this all happened at the start of the First World War. There were many men who were away fighting on the front lines and landlords, greedy landlords took that opportunity to raise the rents of the poorest tenants. The housing conditions were um, extremely poor and very challenging. And instead of paying the rent increase, the women organized. Um, and that is actually the beginning, that, that is the beginning of the rent strikes. We wanted to start with a description of a rent strike action from an evening newspaper in October 1915. And Leslie, Claire, and Ian are gonna speak out that quote. The first attempt to evict a tenant in Glasgow was made yesterday afternoon in Govan. The householder is a widow. As has been the custom since the beginning of the movement against increased rents, a demonstration of strikers was held at the time when the warrant became operative. While Mrs Barber and the Glasgow Women's Housing Association was addressing those assembled, two sheriff officers arrived and endeavoured to gain admission to the house. As soon as it was known that their purpose was to eject the tenant, the demonstrators determined to resist. Most of them were women and they attacked the officers and their assistants with peas meal, flour and whiting. A woman was arrested on a charge of assaulting one of the officers. She was taken to Govan Police Office 
but not detained. Back at the house, a consultation took place between Mrs Barber and the officer after which the latter entered the house without molestation. It was pointed out the tenant was ill and the officer decided to not to proceed with the enforcement of the warrant. And this is from Helen Crawford, a rent strike organizer, suffragette, politician, and communist activist. And Claire is going to tell us what she said. The women organized resistance to evictions in the following way. In Governing Partick, the working class houses were mainly tenements. One woman with a bell would sit in the close watching, while the other women living in the tenement went on with their household duties. Whenever the bailiff's officer appeared to evict a tenant, the women in the passage immediately rang the bell. They came from all parts of the building. Some with flour, if they were baking, wet clothes, if they were washing, and other missiles. Usually the bailiff made off for his life, chased by a mob of angry women. But you may be wondering, how did all that get started? That is what we'll be sharing at our next stop, which is just literally two blocks away on McLeod Street. And while we take our virtual walk around the corner, that way really mostly, um, here's a short animation that can speed us along. Okay, so now we're at McLeod Street. Can you feel that the air is different? You've got some sort of river breeze coming towards you. <laughs> Trish can feel the river breeze. Um, so we're gonna speak about Mary Barber's, really like when she first moved to Govan um, and what happened. Um, but first, just a tiny bit of background from me. Mary Barber was born in 1875 and she left us in 1958. She was a working class political activist and a political pi pioneer. Um, as we've mentioned, she was one of the leaders of the Govan rent strikes and a founder member of the Women's Peace Crusade and the Glasgow Women's Housing Association, which you will definitely hear more about later. She represented the people of Govan and Glasgow within Glasgow Town Council and throughout her life, she really campaigned um, and championed for the welfare of women and children, um, something which is still of great importance today. I'm sure we can all agree. She fought for better housing. She fought for the means testing of benefits. She fought for access to birth control and she fought for children's welfare clinics. And I will hand over to Leslie who is going to explain why we are standing here. So, we know from the public records that Mary Barber and her husband David lived in Dumbarton in 1897 and that the family was still living there two years later. However, by 1901, Mary David and their small son James were living on McLeod Street, which is between Govan Old Church, which you can see behind me, and the River Clyde. Maps of this area show that at the time there were three tenements, and we know that number five was the one closest to the river's edge. We believe that it is after her move to Govan that Mary became more politically active. She joined the Kinning Park branch of the Cooperative Women's Guild, became a member of the Independent Labour Party, the ILP, and attended the Socialist Sunday Schools. Yet we know very little about her actual life during the time when she was living here in McLeod Street. After all, she was only a housewife. And there aren't many records of what housewives do. However, 
Since we're speaking about tenements, Trish will tell us what another rent strike organiser, Mary Burns Led, who we'll meet again later, said of them. The tenement system of housing is a refined form of cruelty. Tenement property may look prosperous from the outside, but in the houses there is a constant struggle and anxiety to bring up a family in decency. Why should the working class wife have to wait until she reached middle age before she attained accommodation and comparative comfort? And now Claire will tell us what Mary Barber said shortly before she was elected to public office. The women will be required to organise as housewives and fight hard to make the corporation build the right kind of houses for the workers. The old humbugs who think a room and kitchen good enough for us have got to be cleared out of the council before we can hope to get proper houses. What is wanted is deeds, not words. Deeds, not words. We recognise the phrase deeds, not words as one of the slogans used by Evelyn Pankers and the suffragettes. We were particularly delighted to hear Mary Barber echo the phrase as it suggests her interest and perhaps her involvement in that movement. Sadly, we know very little about the activity of working class women in Scotland um, within the suffragette movement, particularly. Um, and this is something that Elsbeth King, whose words we shared at the very beginning of our, our journey, um, has written about really eloquently. So Elsbeth talks about what she calls the double disadvantage of, of Scottish suffragettes because they were both women and Scots. And I think within our team and within our research, we've really seen, um, and I would assert that there is potentially a triple disadvantage for working class women who were suffragettes um, in terms of their um, inclusion in the historical record. But despite at the time, risk of arrest, or risk of arrest, the kind of danger to their person, there would have been thousands of working class women in Scotland involved in that movement. Um, however, what we found and what is definitely the case is that out with a very few example, their names and actions, like many in Mrs. Barber's army, are not currently part of the historical record. And that is something that we are actively straining against um, in our work together and something that you hopefully are helping us to do today. So thank you. Long may it continue. So now we are gonna take just another short walk um, down the road, actually down Govan Road to Morris Hall, which is the site of where we know rent strike um, events, actions were organized. And to kind of speed us along the way, we are going to have a very short video interlude. Hi, I'm Leslie and I'm part of the Protests and Suffragettes team and I want to introduce you to an amazing woman. One could think of Agnes Dolan as just a blacksmith's daughter who became Lady Provost, but that would be doing her a huge disservice. I am inspired by Agnes the trade unionist, the suffragette, the rent strike activist, the politician and the peace campaigner. I am inspired by the most intelligent young woman with a fine speaking voice, as Helen Crawford described her. I am inspired by a woman who was the first woman to stand as a Labour candidate for Glasgow City Council, and the woman who was the first person ever to stand as a Labour candidate to be MP for Dumfriesshire. I am inspired by a woman who maintained and campaigned for an anti-war opinion through two world wars, but still did what was necessary on the home front. I am inspired by her continued support for universal suffrage, even after the 1918 Representation of the People Act was passed. And I am inspired by her words from 1934, which still ring true today in 2020, when we still have people living on our streets and dying of hunger in our communities. She said, I stand definitively in favor of a complete change in the present system of society. The problem we are up against is that of poverty in the midst of plenty. Okay, in the 1910s, we know from surviving posters, such as the one that you've just seen, 
and adverts in the newspapers that there were several places where rent strike meetings were often held. One of them was here at Morris Hall. Leslie, how did Helen Crawford describe these gatherings? Rent strike meetings gave the opportunity for anti-war and socialist propaganda from these platforms. I soon found myself in the thick of the fight, addressing meetings, always somewhat disgusted that the workers were asking so little when the whole world was theirs by right. So we know from this poster that the Glasgow Women's Housing Association, which you can see right across the top of that poster, met at Morris Hall. Mary Barber would absolutely have been in attendance, um, as would Helen Crawford, because she was the secretary, and Agnes Dolan, because Agnes was the treasurer. Agnes was also another key activist in the Glasgow rent strikes. She was a founding member, in addition to all of her work with Mary Barber and others on the rent strikes, she was a founding member um, of the Women's Peace Crusade and also the Glasgow branch of the Women's International League. And in 1934, Agnes Dolan spoke about her desire to see change for the better. And Leslie is going to share with us what she said. I stand definitively in favor of a complete change in the present system of society. The problem we are up against is that of poverty in the midst of plenty. So if I can draw your attention back to the poster um, for another moment, we can also guess that in addition to these women that we know because they're named, um, we, we can also guess that many others would have gathered to, to plan rent strike actions. Um, we know that Mary Burns Laird, um, who was the president of the Glasgow Women's Housing Association, chaired a meeting on the 16th of February, 1915, because we see it right there. And we also know that there would have been musical selections, songs, and readings, I imagine, poetry readings. Claire, could you share with us a little more of how this has been described by Helen Crawford? The idea was to bring together women of all political parties into the agitation and drive for better housing in Glasgow. The Glasgow Women's Housing Association took up this issue and in the working class districts, committees were formed to resist these increases in rent. And now we're gonna take yet another short digital stroll down the road. Um, it'll be faster for us than it would be in real life, but not terribly long regardless. Um, and we're going to visit the tenement where Mary Barber lived in 1915 during the rent strikes. And as we've, ex we've had before, there's gonna be a sort of a slide and a little bit of a, an interlude while we get ourselves ready um, and walk ourselves down the road um, to the next stop on our virtual tour. So we'll see you in a second. In the tenements of Glasgow in the year 1915, it was one line bloody struggle to keep ourselves alive. Working ten at the coppers to buy our scraps of food when the landlords put up the rent just because they could. Factories were humming, there was overtime galore But wages they were driven down to subsidise the war Out came Mrs Barber from her wee bit single end And she said I'll organise the lassies if I can use the men Cos I'll be going in your be partick This shin here's be bridge of weir and nuns be killing part There's some that's prod, there's some that's Catholic Some of us proud, some of us 
wat lekt me wat, wat met z'n baar, was aan me en wat hier tegen de wat. Met z'n baar, was aan me, spreekt terug, les kan ik de plek. The meester's got the message, and the message was no big. Well, our men will fight the Kaiser, we'll stay him and fight the war. Against the greedy bastards who keep grinding in the poor. If you want to stop conscription, stand and fight the profiteers. Bring the hail big bloody sand, put crashing down the run of ears. Feel the stars said Mrs. Barber, while the men we call the rain are marching. Up they hear their heads blood washed like water down the drain. Cause aren't they going? Yuffie Partick, Russian Yuffie Bridge, we're in nuns for killing part. The sun is proud, the sun is Catholic, but we're Mrs. Barber's army and we're here to do the work. Well, it didn't take the government that long to realise if you crack down on the leaders, the rest will compromise. They arrested Mrs. Barber and they clapped her in the jail But they made an awfully big mistake, they let her out and bail She caught men for all the factories and the cladding on the carts They marched up to the court to send we'll tear this place apart This Mrs. Barber's army broke the maesters to their knees By a regiment in pennies back by one in Dungarees Cause I'm the government and you're the partick this year here's me bridge a weir and none's fake in the park The summer's prod, the summer's Catholic But we're Mrs. Barber's army and we're here to do the work Hey, we're Mrs. Barber's army and we're here to do the work So we're now near where I live at 43 U.S. Street but known in Mary Barber's time as Your Street. And this is where Mary Barber and her family lived in 1915, during the rent strikes. And as we've said, in addition to leading the rent strikes, Mary Barber was a prominent member of the Independent Labour Party, the ILP, and she was involved in the Women's Peace Crusade. In 1920, she was one of the first women councillors ever elected to Glasgow. Five other women, Mary Bell, Mary Snodgrass, Violet Mary Craig Roberton, who are in this picture, and the further two, Eleanor Stewart and Jessica Baird Smith. This was a watershed moment for women's represent, represent, representation. In 1924, only four years later, she became a bailey and a magistrate. Ian, what did Mary Barber say in becoming a bailey and magistrate? I'm very glad to have been made a bailey, not for personal gratification, but because the role will give me greater power to help the community where I live, and because my election marks one more step towards that still distant goal, absolute equality between the sexes. And today that goal of equality still feels distant, because it is. Mary fought for women's rights her entire life. Her many achievements included chairing a committee which created the Glasgow Women's Welfare and Advisory Clinic, the first women's family planning clinic in Scotland. It opened in August 1926 on Govan Road. Leslie, what did the local paper say about the opening? The object of the clinic is to give advice to all married women desiring information on the limitation of families. The organising secretary, Mrs Old, states, We feel it is of the utmost importance that knowledge of family planning, which has long been in the hands of the rich, should be given to the poor also for their benefit and well-being. That family planning clinic was followed three months later in November 1926 by the opening of another clinic, the West Govan Child Welfare Clinic, just around the corner from where Mary Barber lived and where we are now. And that's where we're going on our next stop in this virtual walk.
But as we have had before, here's a very short sort of video animation while we journey ourselves to the next stop. We're now standing round the corner on Arklet Road. In November 96, a new child welfare clinic was opened here by Lady Helen Graham. The Govan Press published a picture of those attending the opening, including Bailey's Mary Barber and Violet Mary Craig Walberton, two of the six women, as we've heard, that were elected to Glasgow Town Council in 1920. Thanks also to the Govan Press, we know that the West Govan Child Welfare Association felt greatly indebted to both of them for their interest and support, which they were able to provide due to their influence on the council. Mary Barber's work as the chair of the Glasgow Women's Welfare and Advisory Committee and her involvement in the opening of this clinic are two examples of her lifelong focus on the health and welfare of working class families, particularly women and children. And it is worth remembering that her contributions are still with us a hundred years later that same building is serving local families and children and it is still run by caring governites. Mary Barber envisaged a brighter future for Glasgow and Glaswegians and encouraged all those around her to help fight for it. And here's Trish to share Mary's vision with us. To Glasgow, which will be second to no city in the world for happy children and healthy citizens. We have too long borne the hardship of bad housing. And we are determined to use our newfound political power for the direction of securing healthy homes for ourselves and our families. So we are now going to journey again. I keep saying around the corner, but actually many of these locations are quite near each other. So it's just round Elder Park and down the street. We're going to journey to our last stop, amazingly, which is the site of a rent strike action um, in 1915 on Hutton Drive. But before we go, um, and to speed us along, as we've done before on our journey, um, we're going to have a short sort of video um, while we get ourselves ready for 10 Hutton Drive. We are here at 10 Hutton Drive because it was the site of a rent strike action in 1915. And today it's also the only place in Govan that marks the rent strike with a commemorative plaque. The black and white image you're seeing now shows a level of public response to the attempted eviction of John Hospera, a munitions worker. By November of that year, almost 20,000 tenants across Glasgow were reported to be on rent strike. In this fight, Mary Barber was described, the leading woman in Govan. Claire, what did Helen Crawford report at the time? In Govan, on one occasion where a woman had been persuaded by the house factor to pay the increase, having been told that the other tenants had paid, Mrs Barber got the men from the shipyards in Govan to come out onto the street where the house factor's office was, and then went up with the women and demanded the return of the money. On the factor being shown, the thousands of workers crowding the street 
he handed it over. <laughs> and now, a quote from a 1984 film that we highly recommend called Red Skirts of Cloudside. The back courts were well suited to having outdoor meetings. All the speaker needed to do was to get on top of the midden, or refuse heap, and speak. The women in the houses just opened the windows and listened to what was being said. Now they were organised in different groups, and when it came to an eviction, women came out with the bells and ricketties, and whenever they started ringing the bells or winding these ricketties, the women and children gathered. And the work organising the back course of government was successful. On 17th of November 1915, thousands of women, children and shipyard workers came out on strike, marching from Govan to the main court in Glasgow city centre. As a result of their actions, the Rent Restrictions Act was introduced into Parliament only eight days later. This legislation made sure that rents were lowered back to their earlier pre-war level. And this blue plaque commemorates their success and rightly credits Mary Barber in leading the rent strikes, in leading this fight. So we are really, as a team, delighted that this blue plaque is here in Govan. However, we also want to make the point, which we hope we have started to make and started to share with you, um, which is that we feel and want to constantly just promote the fact that the rent strikes were part and were, were led by a network of strong, savvy women, strong women of the Clyde, including Mary Barber, Agnes Dolan, Helen Crawford, Mary Burns Laird, Mary Jeff, and many others whose names and actions we still hope to recover. These women got to see their actions have great effects for themselves and others. Not only in the passing of the 1915 Rent Restrictions Act, but also from the 1918 Representation of the People Act and the Further Act in 1928. After all, it was only five years later, after the rent strikes, that the first women were elected to Glasgow City Council, including Mary Barber. So those of you who are local to Glasgow might already know that two of the four public statues that are honoring women are actually in Govan. But we also, as we've said, we want to honor other women who were involved in what Willie Gallagher dubs Mary Barber's army. Um, and that's something that as a team, as a group, as a project, um, we will continue to do, to continue to look to fight and find more names, to really continue to try to find their exact words, what they said about what they were doing and about each other, rather than what was written about them, or more likely how they were sort of left out of the historical record and the local, the, the sort of uh, newspapers of the time. Um, we find a lot of inspiration um, from these strong women of the Clyde side, and we really, really hope um, that you have also found some small modicum of inspiration, delight, joy, that we maybe have surprised you even just a tiny bit today. Um, yeah, and we will continue to work to find more strong women of the Clyde side, past and present. Um, so that is remarkably um, that is us done with our virtual tour. This is our last stop. So um, from all of us in Scotland to all of you in Scotland and around the world, I just want to say um, thank you so much for joining us. Please stay safe, stay inspired. It's a difficult time and we just hope that we brought even just a little modicum of joy to you and please get in touch. Yeah, we send yeah. you all of the sunny love from Scotland. <laughs>